Welcome to my second video on the Geiger counter. Before we start, here's my new tutorial wallpaper for my sound design videos where we will examine synth patches in detail. Here we will examine a single Geiger counter pop sound, which sounds like this. We will construct this micro-scaled sound using the main synth modules. In this way, we have more precision over the tiny one-shot sound, more so than the stream. After analysing some Geiger popping sounds, I noticed that they had an impulse-like chirp, as well as a resonant tail on the end, as shown here. I've set it up with fixed frequency oscillators which are triggered by the MIDI notes. These one shot sounds are therefore played as they are performed on the keyboard. Now let's hear only the resonant tail, which is a sine wave playing at a fixed frequency. And now the main pop sound. Now together. Using the oscillator mode gives us a lot of flexibility. We can envelope that tail exactly how we would like, which is 55 milliseconds long. The frequency chosen was based off a resonant frequency in the Geiger counter device. And it's easy to change that resonance as you like. For example, let's set it to around 3 kHz. And it has now become almost like a glass hit. Let's undo and reset it to 415Hz. Note that this tail is mixed 17dB lower than the impulse, which illustrates how striking even just a single frequency or harmonic can have on a transient sound. If I choose a uniform mix, it is too much and almost as if we have stuck our head inside the Geiger device. Additionally, by using this synth engine, we can also finesse the impulse trigger a little more, for which I am using the oscillator B channel. I am using a library wave called Impulse, which has a good chirp shape. To illustrate, I'll just offset the phase here. A lot of chirp and even click sounds have a strong bias to the upper harmonics, but generally tend to have very flat spectrums. If I decide to add in these low frequency harmonics and increase their amplitude significantly, The spectrum becomes biased and the chirp effect is diminished. You'll see it adds a lot of space in the wave cycle. I also like the narrow tone of this wave, given by its peaks in the upper spectrum. And I did modify it as well. As you can see, slightly different here, just to change the tone. It is important to take into account the fixed frequency oscillator, which I've set to 43 Hz. Therefore, the first harmonic on the wavetable is 43 Hz. The 15th harmonic, consequently, equals 655 Hz. The 1 kHz range is around this peak bump here as well. Now by triggering this fixed frequency wave in oscillator B, we can hear this absolute spectrum and use it as a reference. Additionally, the wave cycle at 43Hz is short enough that we can use an envelope to strike the main transient immediately. That envelope, which is shown here, decays almost like a step shape as fast as 9 milliseconds. And we've got that attack at minimum of about one millisecond. This in itself increases the brightness of the chirp by imposing a sharp click. Alternatively, if I dampen the attack, the chirp sound is also dampened in the high frequencies by comparison.
It is also dampened if the phase of the main chirp is delayed by a few milliseconds. This is mainly because the attack of the envelope is lost through the low amplitude part of the wave cycle, which is mostly inaudible. We'll look at the next module after the oscillator, which is a wave shaper. This enriches the spectrum by compressing the wave. As you'll notice, the original wave is softer in frequency and dynamics. Any sharp transient, as we have made here, especially with a minimized attack envelope, can be enhanced with a wave shaper. Lastly, I rolled off any excess low frequencies with a high pass filter around my chosen fundamental frequency. The impulse is also randomizing approximately one semitone every trigger. If we turn it higher, we get more of a sputtering, galloping effect. The effect module I'm using is a simple multi-comb, which was not really developed. Although we can definitely add more comb filtering for more varied resonance. So perhaps after watching these two videos you can see that one technique gives the most detailed one-shot sound. Whereas the former was developed as an interactive stream of popping sounds. Impulse and chirp sounds have always interested me and are probably some of the most deceiving and unusual sounds when measured.